Okay, so in today's video, I want to look at some particular study tips that will really help you improve your understanding and in particular measure your understanding of a new concept when we're studying mathematics. Of course, these techniques are largely going to apply to any field of study, but it's uh, very common for these to be addressed in pure mathematics and applied mathematics. So let's start with the following very simple example. So uh, we have an integer is defined to be a whole number. So we learned these a long time ago. So an integer is typically denoted by a bold Z. And what we want to do to test our understanding is construct examples and non-examples of integers. So if we can do this, then that's some indication that we know something about them. If we can't do that, then that's an indication that we don't know something about the integers. So let's have a look, let's give it a go. So some standard examples would be maybe two, three, they're the natural numbers at least, but we could also have minus eight, zero, and 14. So that is, those are perfectly good examples of integers. What we could also do to check our understanding is attempt to construct non-examples. So in this case, we would try to find numbers which are not integers, and those are numbers which are not whole numbers. So for example, one half, we could also do three on seven. We could do minus four on nine. We could do root three. We could do pi. We could even do Euler's number e. So this, the fact that we could generate so many examples gives us a feel for what the integers are. And if we have a feel for what they are, then we have likely a good enough understanding to solve many problems concerning the integers. Okay, of course, that's a perfectly elementary example. So let's try something a little more complicated. So let's try to construct a function, which is never zero. So what do I mean by a function? So a function maybe from the reals uh, to the reals, which is uh, never zero. So if we were to visualize this, so if we had the graph of f, and this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, we want to construct a function which never intersects the x-axis here. Okay, so what's, what's an example of such a thing? Well, I can take the function f of x to be x squared plus 1. The function x squared will pass through uh, 0, 0, passes through the origin. So if I bump it up a little bit, let's say by 1, then it will never intersect the x-axis, and that does exactly what I want. Another example could be the exponential function. So, or it's more commonly known as e to the x, and the graph of that is is just given by that. So that's the graph of e to the x. And this just gives us a feel and a, at least, a, again, a test of our understanding. I asked this to some of my students in uh, who are in a first year university course and they struggled to construct an example of a function which is never zero. So this is definitely something that's worthwhile. Uh, furthermore, so I have this star here, this reminds me to to tell you something else, which is you should also try to construct or at least challenge yourself to try to construct the simplest examples possible. For example, if I chose a function uh, that was never zero and I chose something like this, so I chose a function that was like uh, equal to one at uh, minus three and it's equal to min minus two at one and it's a function that looks like this. Oh, that already fails. Uh, something like this. This is already too complicated and, and misses the point. The dumbest example I can think of, or the simplest example I can think of of a function which is never zero, would just be to take f of x to be the function which is one everywhere. So the graph of this would just be the function uh, y equals one. I don't think you can get much simpler than that. Okay, so let's try something a little more interesting and something that actually does appear 
in university mathematics that students often struggle with, uh, disappointingly, which is uh, the continu notion of continuity of a function. So recall that a function, again, will restrict to f from r to r, is continuous if the limit of the function coincides with the value of the function at every point. Well, what does that mean? That means that if I look at the limit as x tends towards p, where p is some point of f of x, then f is continuous at p if this limit is actually equal to f of p. So this is a definition that typically goes in one ear and out the other. And all you remember is that you should think of continuity as a function whose graph can be drawn without lifting your pen off the page. Uh, that last definition I gave you is not a definition, that's just rubbish. Uh, this limit definition is the appropriate definition and we need to really understand this definition. So that's what we really, that's the main aim of, well, at least the study of continuity in in one variable calculus is to understand this definition. So first thing we should do is use, use the technique we have been using so far and attempt to construct examples. So let's try to construct an example of a continuous function. There are many examples that we could consider. Probably the simplest ones are given by polynomials. So if f is, let's say, ax squared plus bx plus c, well, that's a quadratic, so it's a polynomial of degree 2. We could actually consider any polynomial. All polynomials are continuous. We could consider the exponential function again. That is a perfectly good exponential, uh, sorry, continuous function. We could also have the trigonometric functions, which are sine x and cos x. Let's try to make that a bit nicer. Uh, cos x. And we could take sums of these, products of these, uh, compositions of these, and they would all be continuous as well. Okay, that's the easy part. Now construct an example of a function which is not continuous. Okay, so we need to construct a function for which this limit uh, doesn't coincide with the function value. A very common one that we could think of would be the function which is minus 1, so for x less than 0, we'll have the function which is minus 1 along there, and for x greater than or equal to 0, we'll have the function being plus 1. So if we write this more formally, f of x is the function which is 1 for x greater than or equal to 0, and minus 1 for x less than 0. So here if we try to compute the limit as x tends towards 0 of f of x, then the left limit is equal to minus 1, the right limit is equal to 1, so this limit does not exist. And in particular, the function is not continuous. Uh, the fancy word for this function is the uh, heaviside function, or heaviside function, depending on your pronunciation. And this gives a perfectly good example of a function which is not continuous. It's not continuous at the origin. Okay, so let's try to come up with a more interesting example, really illustrating whether we understand the notion of continuity, which would be the following. Construct an example of a function which is not continuous at a point, but the limit exists at that point. So here, the example we constructed with the heaviside function is not continuous because the limit doesn't exist. And this is the example this type of example is what most students fall back on when they want to construct an example of a function which is not continuous. So you have something like this maybe. This function has a break in it and the left limit doesn't coincide with the right limit so again continuity fails. This example I have spoken about in another video but I will recall it here. The favorite, My favorite example is when we consider the modulus function for all x that are non-zero, so this is mod x, uh, when x is not equal to zero, but when x is equal to zero, we'll just define the function to be four. So again, if I write things a little more formally, I'll have f of x is equal to the mod function for x not equal to zero, and it's equal to four 
when x is equal to 0. So what's useful about this, or what's interesting, is that the limit does exist when we approach from the left and the right. The limit of the function as x tends towards 0 is defined, and it's equal to 0. But that's not equal to the function value, because the function value is 4. So this really gives us an interesting example and really boils down to the heart of what continuity is. Namely that the limit uh, as x tends towards that point of the function uh, needs to coincide with the function value. And so if you do this, every time you're in introduced to a new concept in mathematics, try to really construct a bank of examples that you can bear in mind, which will allow you to run through or at least have an idea of what's going on when you are attempting to solve a problem. In particular, if you're solving a problem that seems very difficult, oftentimes it's very useful to solve it in simpler cases. So taking a specific case and seeing what's going on there. And that might be the subject of a future video on uh, mathematics study tips. Okay, that's it for this video. Um, if you like the video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. There should be notes in the video's description down below, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Thanks, guys.